I'll start slow because <laughs> nobody really knows this is happening. So. <laughs> build our we'll audience. See. Yeah, we'll let yes. our audience yes. build. Oh, it's building. I can feel it even now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because a lot of the people who usually Live watch are here. Are here. Are here. And there is the reverend Jim. Come, come, come say hello. Come, 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 come say hello. We have our first guest already. Yes. 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 Hi. This is fun. I am Jean Pupke. I serve the congregation in Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Go Nats! Yay! You this is a little the little excited green about logo. baseball today. Michael Look Tino just yeah. joined us. Oh, yeah, Michael, Michael Tino! Tino. Oh, this is yeah. the view. Oh, a former, yeah. ho an emeritus, a, a host, host. host. emeritus. Uh, say hello and who you are. I'm Tom Shade. I used to be on the view, oh, right. many years ago. Many, many, many years, years ago. Years we interviewed ago. Ralph Waldo Emerson. <laughs> <laughs> So how are you? Excellent. You enjoying it here? Yes, this is super. I, at super. lunch you went like this to me. Does that mean perhaps? No, I, I actually did like this. A lot. Did like this. It's like stuff is blowing my so mind. It's blowing, yeah. Blowing yeah. my mind. I just had one plenary so far. I know. And that was like truly. Well, I excellent. guess last night Sophia kind of did. Yeah, yeah, plenary. kind of. Did something, but, yeah. 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 A lot of good interview gets. I, here. Yes, that's true. You Here's could one just right like, here. Yeah. You could just like snag people in the hall. Yeah, that's, oh, exactly. that's the plan. It's okay, well, I've had my moment. Yeah, <laughs> had the moment. So we that's should good. probably mention that where we are. Yes. Oh, what a good yes. idea. <laughs> that's a good idea. Just, you know, for the heck of it. So we are coming to you live Bye. from the Black Lives Matter Harper Jordan Symposium. I fly as you, entire universe. Blue, blue, but yes. Blue, blue. Blue. Um, and we are talking about all things theology of Black, Black Lives of UU, Black Theology. Um, it has been so far extraordinary. and The, like the crowd said, itself yeah. is worth coming for, yeah. the people who are here. Yeah. And then the speakers are just brilliant. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. And I really like how intentionally this group was built. So Blue did a lot of work um, really trying to decide how to form a 155 person symposium, it's particularly putting parameters around it being small so that people could really talk and be able to interact with one another. Amazing um, chaplain program. Really great chaplain program. Chaplains for uh, that are specifically for yep, non-black non POC and um, black chaplains. So it's really yeah, good. It's been really, really well organized and the care is just palpable in the room. Yeah. People we feel. have 15 people live right now. Yay! 15 people live. We love you. Okay, yes. we have a guest. Okay, All right. Hi, um, another View alum who's been alone here before. Yes. So step hey. right up here. Hey, there's your mark. Hey. And hey. Introduce hey. yourself and say how it is for you. Oh, hey. All right. Well, I'm Sana Saeed. I came from Philadelphia. Um, excited to be here. I'm also drum president. So yeah. <laughs> So I'm glad to be able to represent Drum here, and Blue's been really amazing so far. I love the morning symposium panel and learned so much about black humanists, um, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Anything about yeah. Drum you want to tell us? Um, Drum is um, doing really well. We're going to be going to New Orleans for our Drum Steering Committee retreat. And say what Drum stands for for new, drum new viewers. Drum stands yeah. for Diverse Revolutionary Unitarian Universalist Multicultural Ministry. And we are a people of color um, ministry um, working to provide faith formation, leadership development, and support for our lay leaders across the country. Excellent! Yay. 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 And top, yeah. What do you want to say? Uh, I was going to say top fan pianos here in person. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Piano party. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing? Oh, live, live. Two weeks in a row. <laughs> um, I'm, so I heard you guys asking other people questions, and I'm like, what do I want to talk about? And um, I think today uh, during the morning worship or the morning centering, Matthew said something that I think is really important, and that is that our liberation is tied into our love. Yes. Um, and I am just so grateful that a core component of Blue Black Lives Unitarian Universalist, of drum, of the work that we do in this faith is love-centered, and how important that is, and how it is intrinsically tied to me getting free, getting other people free. And so 
it just is a really profound reminder this morning of how much love is in this space and how much love we need to get free. So I've been thinking way too deep. And so now I'm going to dance and have fun. Now, wait, yeah. wait, I have a question for you. Yes. You used to live here in the Twin Cities, and now you're in Arizona. I still do things. Right? I'm a Minnesota. I'm an Ann Arborite. Ann Arbor. Oh, so it's no different to be here because it's no. so damn cold. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what's interesting? Michigan, even though we're a Great Lakes state, is a lot drier. Um, Minnesota has 15,000 lakes and a big, huge river called the Mississippi, and so there's more water, and so it's colder here in a different way, like the water effect. Where in Ann Arbor, the nearest body of water we have is pretty far away, and it's not. We're not impacted. Yeah. So it's still 40 degrees so at home. Okay. Yeah, I might have it's to call my mom and get a sweater. Week. Hi, mom. In yeah. case you see this. <laughs> and um, I just want to say to all the folks in Ann Arbor at UUAA, um, at Uni First Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Ann Arbor, that I'm thankful you guys are hopefully watching this. And I'm excited that you guys are going to be watching uh, the worship watch party on Saturday morning yes. that's being co-sponsored by black congregants of UUAA as well as the Challenging Racism Group, 1045 Doors Open Up. And uh, if you have not bought the live stream yet of Blue, you still could get all five sessions and Reverend Sekou on Friday night. So uh, I don't know if there's a link somewhere, but you should find it. And you should- Blacklivesuu.com. It's sold out, last I saw. No, live the live stream, stream isn't. Said, live stream sold out. No, how you sell out a no, live tickets stream? No, tickets That's are That's how we do, okay. hey! <laughs> But I, I mess things up a lot, so don't believe me. Um, but there is a ton of folks who want to come say hi to you all. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad the boo is here. I like saying it that way because that's who I am the person. Boo. I like it. And um, I'm just grateful that everybody's here and that we get to be um, in love with each other and liberating ourselves mm -hmm. constantly. Right. Yes. Thank you. Oh, I wanted to creep up on you. Oh, oh come on. Creep up. <laughs> Ready, take do over. We're creeping up. Everybody's beautiful and lovely. <laughs> Um, I'm Renee Reed, and I am a member of Team Sankofa, yes. and I love, and I love being here, and I'm glad that this is happening, and that we are exploring our faith and getting these questions answered, getting these questions asked. Yes. And um, yeah, I'm just really happy to be here and loving and joy with all of my sibs. And you were one of the people in uh, New Orleans at the convening. I was at the convening where we asked a lot more questions, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like, what is this? What can we do? And to go from, from there where it was just like, what do we do now? What do we do next? And Blue asking us, what is it that you need? What is it that you want? And then to see it, I couldn't believe it. Because at the time, I was like, y'all, they're going to break off. We're going to have us own church, right? <laughs> right? And I was like, I think it's going to happen. But it happened so fast. Right. It happened so fast. And I'm just really joyful that it took place. Yes. 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 Thank you. So, hey, Renee, would you be willing to tell us more about Team Sankofa? Oh, yeah. oh no. Kiara. Oh, I tag, tag in. What you need? <laughs> what you need? So, <laughs> your life. <laughs> okay. Look, we both got real quiet. We got live. We got live. Oh my God. <laughs> you did not know. You, you did not live. But like you did good. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, team Sankofa. So, Team Sankofa. What's that we are about? the. So, so uh, Blue does a lot of things, but uh, the one thing that we love doing is social justice campaigns and social justice actions. Yes. And not only doing them, but um, scaling them because we are a national organization. Things going coast to coast and how they look in each community, it cannot be the same. Um, so, we are the folks who help generate those campaigns, but then we're also the folks who help flush out the details to make them realistic for any community who wants to engage them. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are constantly in our own spaces and own environments, our educational spaces, looking for ideas or energy or things that are up and coming in social justice mm -hmm. that need our attention um, in ways that we can get everybody free. Mm -hmm. All right. So we do that so the, the OC can do other things and the board can do other things. So it's just a, mm -hmm. a different model of um, engagement. So mm -hmm. I the social it. justice arm of blue. That's our yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yeah. That's great. Yeah. So Thank I'm gonna you. walk away now. All right. Yeah. But I love you. <laughs> I love you.
just got to back away. We have an elder coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another another person you've seen on the view recently. Yes. Um, oh, esteemed so Paula Cole Jones. Can you tell us about this? Oh yes. What a, it was a surprise and indeed an honor that Blue formed when Blue was first formed. They formed the 360 degree Council of Elders, and uh, so there was a small group of us as elders. And it was interesting because you. Blue invited me into a stage of my own life that I had been pushing away, you know, no. rejecting. But it's important in the cultural context to embrace to, it, to, embrace it yeah. to recognize all of us, recognize our elders, yes. and um, and just to understand kind of that gradual life progression that we're all a part of. So it was quite a surprise and indeed an honor. I'm going to wear this a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get to be in the pulpit a lot. But I want to say this morning's presentation by Dr. Christopher Cameron has meant so much to me. I grew up humanist in an all souls church. And so to have humanism framed in terms of a larger um, society uh, and from a cultural context that just meant everything to me. And I would have to say to have it framed as black humanism. Yeah. Exactly. Like that part of it, you know, was just, we hear a lot about humanism within Unitarian Universalism, but to actually have it specifically framed and around that's the black, cultural relevance. Oh, to me. that was just so, so rich. So, so much share. history. So, rich. And so many names and yeah. places. So and, rich. Yeah. Yeah. So growing up in All Souls Church, I understood black humanism as a lived experience. Mm -hmm didn't need to be articulated, and with David Eaton, who was the minister there, right. for 23 years, I just I just lived it, I soaked it all in. Mm -hmm. It was my theology, it never needed to be explained. But what I heard today then kind of puts me in a different place, not just in terms of Unitarian Universalism, but as a part of the free thinking movement right. that's much bigger and, ha and has always been working right. against oppression, mm -hmm. which is what I do. Yes. And I do that because David Eaton inspired that and taught that. And so I just, I feel like I'm on a new part of my own journey in terms mm -hmm. of understanding and being able to articulate the theology that I've been living my whole life. Uh, and y'all, it's only like one o'clock on day one. Just one plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we just got started. So we thank just you got started. very and much. And you're here. Transformation. Yes. New life. Yeah. Here's another elder. Oh my Come on up. There's Mark. There's on. There you go. Yeah, there's your Mark. My mark. Your mark. There's your Mark. Dr. Nice. Leon Spencer, how's it for you to be here? You, like Paula Cole Jones, you've been in this work for decades. It's one of the rare moments of really feeling home and centered. Mm. Really feeling home. We talk about home and what it feels like. It's like I'm in a dream. The number of black people, people of color, uh, how empowering it is just to be in their presence. And so it's a real centering kind of piece for me. I've been a U I've been a Unitarian and then a Unitarian University for fifty four years. And this is from home. It's history in the making. It is, yes. it is history in the making and hopefully not a forgotten history. No that we pick up and we, we move and we go in the direction that is centered on who we are and where we want it to go. And even if we don't know, this is such a great travel for me. So I'm really honored to be here. I feel nurtured. So giving and receiving. Frequently we talk over the lifespan about what we do with our children and religious education. And we talk about religious education over the lifespan. We need a caring over the lifespan. We need caring over the lifespan. That's yes. right. Absolutely. That's right. For every one of us. Amen. And I'm 
speaking of paperweight for those of us with people of color and black and how do we do we have the community that we can care we can challenge and we can trust so it's a challenging trusting caring day that I've had amen thank you thank you Thank you so much. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay. Marga Lee, come on over. Huh? Sydney, are Sydney, you coming come on over? Yes. Here's a mark. Hello. Hey, Sydney. Hi. Hi, everybody. Where are you located and how are you having this experience so far? So, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, and I <laughs> am just overwhelmed with excitement really um it's really cool to meet all of my internet friends <laughs> and to spend time with people that i'm in the community with online so that part is really like it just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy and it's exciting and fun and everything's really it's just really nice to be around a group of other black folks like to be around people that look like you and can connect with you in another way that other people can't so it's it's a very refreshing experience, and I'm hoping to bring it back to Phoenix with me when I go home. Yay. Well, there's some stuff that I think was what I love also is the modeling of how practically. So this morning, you know, we were naming progressive stacking. So when question and answer is happening, the folks with marginalized identities yeah. are going to be called on first. And if you're white, simply would be request is be patient, but yeah. your voice will not be centered. And so having that modeling, I think, has been for me super impactful for everyone yeah. to you and witness yeah it's really cool I had an experience with uh, a white person actually yesterday who was uh, talking about wanting to just absorb everything and listen and take it all in and not be the focus um, she was very much like I just want to learn I want to be here I realize that this is a sacred space and I want to do what I can to respect that sacred space so I think that it's really cool and I hope that other white folks that are here with us have also have that same similar uh, thought process. Because it's unusual for white Unitarian Universalists yeah. to name and embody that. Yeah. That's been my experience. Right. And it was actually really refreshing. I was like, okay, I can... Cool. She's a white person that is acknowledging the fact that she has privilege in the world and wants to support marginalized folks in bringing that up. So she's very like supportive and wanting to just learn. And she was, for a second, she's like, I don't know, like, should white people be here? <laughs> Which was a, I felt was a valid question. Um, but she, she's coming from everything with an open mind and open heart and really wanting to just absorb it, absorb it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here's Elizabeth Ann Terry. Elizabeth Ann Terry. Come on, no, look, you gotta go. I gotta start off yeah. like in Hollywood. You gotta go over to the mark. Over to the mark. How are you? Tell us who you are and where you're based. Ooh, that's a complicated question. My yeah. name, I know, Elizabeth Ann Terry. <laughs> I live in Wilmington, North Carolina, where I am the first lady of the church. <laughs> she has her own parking space that says so. The church put it up. That's, Those people know how to do it. That's, yes. That's how you do it. Yes. That's that's how you do it. I feel so celebrated and honored. Hello. Yes. Hello. 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 So what am I supposed to be saying here? What is your experience so far? And I, suppose I noticed you're an elder. Yes, we have. You are an elder. Yes, beautiful stole. beautiful stole, which was such a lovely surprise. I feel um, mm, honored and celebrated for being 67, almost 68 years old, instead of that being a burden. That's how I feel in this space. That's not how I feel in all Unitarian Universal spaces. Um, but this is amazing. Uh, I've had a lot of laughter and dancing and tears. And... It's like a family reunion when I come to Blue Things. Mm -hmm. uh, and the scholarly presentation today by um, Dr. Christopher was, um, wow. Wow. Yeah. Right? Like, wow. And these wonderful things, some of these people I know of and some I do not. And, and it's also fabulous. And it's like, really? 
she eulogized Susan B. Anthony and we don't know her well? Yeah. Oh, what's that about? Right. You know, and there seems to be, and I want to do a little more research on this, there seems to be some kind of nexus in Norfolk, Virginia. Because we've been talking about Norfolk, Virginia um, it, amongst Universalists in uh, North Carolina. And the Universalists will be having their convocation at Outlaws Bridge, a Universalist church in the spring. And they asked me to portray uh, one of our ancestors from Norfolk, Virginia, and it's like, and she's, oh. and you know, it's like just so amazing. It's just like so amazing. So uh, I'm feeling energized. Uh, I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling challenged, and I can't wait for the next blue thing. Yes. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Bill Those Sinkford, twice president of the UUA. <laughs> Twice. Twice. <laughs> Came back again. Came back from Came back again. Lord, again. <laughs> so you are on The View, and we're live, and we were just asking folks to tell us how your name and how you are experiencing the symposium. Well, I am Bill Sinkford. I am delighted to be here. The symposium is actually an extraordinary experience for me because it brings together such a, a cross-section mm of our community, not just around race lines, mm -hmm. but within the community of people of color. Mm -hmm. We've got elders like me and folks who are brand new or virtually to Unitarian Universalism with, a, with that kind of energy that comes with, they've just found it and have had their first heartbreak and are here to be healed. Mm -hmm. And some of us who have been around and have had hundreds of heartbreaks and been healed so many times it's a healing space for me and for many of us. Uh, a space that we find it hard to create often in our home settings. Yes. It's yes. a healing space that, and I'm a believer in the mystery, mm -hmm. it's a healing space that allows reconciliation within and that allows reconciliation around and without. Mm. I'm very happy to be here. Mm. That was beautiful. We're Thank very you. lucky to yes. have you be here. Yes. <laughs> Matthew Our Taylor. Taylor. Oh, 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 oh. Bring it on in. Here's oh, oh. your mark right here. Oh. On your mark. There you go. On your mark. <laughs> Matthew You're Taylor. Hello. Hello. Matthew Taylor. Uh, to say who you are, I'm singing it. We're on the beat live. <laughs> Oh my, hi everybody! <laughs> I am Matthew Taylor from sunny Southern California, <laughs> representing, I'm going to still say it, U Church of Riverside. Yes, Ooh. Inland Empire. Yep, Inland That's Empire. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, am I just telling the folks how amazing this yes. is? Yes, yes. 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 Oh. And you could start with how amazing the morning worship was. <laughs> because it was flipping yes. off the charts. So I would say I was blessed to, to be asked to be a part of the worship and to participate and bring worship to life this morning. Oh, just my heart. It was so, like, emotional, and it felt so nice to be connected to everyone, to uplift our ancestors and our elders in the room, who so many times people don't know who they are, and it's like, this is our history, this is our culture, and these people are still alive. Like, why are we not honoring them and giving them their flowers and their love while they're here, while we can still connect and have conversation with them? Um, this has been such an amazing experience for me, being here, being with other people of color, and specifically black folks, which, this is history. <laughs> Creating and building and living in history. Um, and I wish all of you were here with us to experience this and to really understand what it means to live out a black theology. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, I really appreciated that you all, you know, opened-ish with, with calling in the directions and talking about the, you know, ancestral and indigenous mm -hmm. uh, land that we were on. That's not something that we experience a lot of times and it just was so meaningful and mm -hmm. and just brought all of that into the room. Right. You know, that, that, that spirit. 
And if I can just add to that, like one of the things that we really wanted to do this morning was ground worship in earth-based practices because so many times I feel like that's something that's forgotten about as well. People assume that because we're people of color, because you may identify as black, that suddenly it's only Christian. Right. Mm -hmm. And as you use, we know we are multi-faith. And faith can look like many things. And this morning, it was a ritual. Yes. And we're going to talk about that on the panel around tomorrow. Matthew Woo! and I, Dante, and Gregory Woo -woo! Boyd. What, what? <laughs> <laughs> so buy the live streams, then you can see it. Yes, please <laughs> buy live stream. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Christina, may I have a hug? Oh, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. But, yep. You're good. You're hi. So hi. we're just asking people to introduce yourself and say how it is here for you. Well, hi. I'm Carla Gates, uh, Congregational okay. President of UUCC, what is Columbia, that Maryland. Okay. Unitar yeah. Unitarian hi. Universalist Congregation of Columbia, Maryland, or as I like to say, UUCC. <laughs> so, how is it to be here? This is like the love and the deep breath that I needed. It is the balm to be loved in my wholeness, in my blackness, and other people's blackness, and other people's POC indigenousness. Um, and to have our white family supporting us um, is incredibly important. I just love it. Um, that's the main thing I love. I also love uh, hearing about uh, black secularists, yes. black free thinkers, yes. and I love the honoring of black pagans. As y'all can see, yes. I am a pagan and a healer. Yes. That's why the Caduceus. Um, and I just, it's been amazing. So I thank you all for the space and for helping us unravel the societal curse, right? That yeah. is white supremacy culture. We are unraveling it together. Yeah. And uh, so it has been beautiful. Yes. All right. Beautiful. Thank you, Blue. Thank you, Thank right. you Blue. Thanks, Thank you, Blue. Thanks, Laura. Come on in. Christina. <laughs> this is your mark right here. Okay. And you are on The View Live. So introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about how you're experiencing this symposium. Uh, I'm Jen Simon. I am the intern at First Unitarian Society of Denver. Yeah, and Denver. This is homecoming. This is um, somebody described it as a big family reunion. It's just um, yeah. It's um, coming from a space where there aren't a lot of UUs of color, and especially not a lot of Black UUs. Um, the worship here has been incredible. And you step into a room and you immediately feel like um, you're known and seen and loved. And it's just been amazing and this is just the first day. That's what I was saying. It's like, it's one o'clock. We're not even like, you know, we're just in the first day. I loved how when we came in for check-in, like all of this greeted us. Yeah. I was just fabulous, you know, just like such a visual affirmation of who we are and why we're here. Yeah, and that's another thing is that you don't hear this yes. a lot. Right. And I've got black ancestors in this tradition. Yes. And that to me is just an amazing thing to realize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just holding holding us all up. Mm. Love Thank, it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh Dr. Sanika. Baba, come on over. Come on over. You know we're you live. Have, yeah, you have to stand right there on that little dot. Well, you don't have to. You can stand Close. in front it of would, it. It would yeah. be helpful. Bobby, you can stand wherever you want. <laughs> I like that. Am I standing where I need to stand? Good. Yes. Now, you are not only one of our elders here in blue, because you were also at the convening in March 2017. You are also were part of the 68... Um, what do we call it still? The controversy, the white empowerment controversy. <laughs> white um, empowerment. That's what uh, yeah, Reverend yeah. Bill Sinkford calls right. it. Um, yeah. So yeah. what is this? How is this like? How is this all for you? Yeah. Well, first, let, <clears throat> let me c contextualize what it what it is for for me. It's uh, it's like going back in time, better than fifty years ago. Mm -hmm. I was the chairperson of the first Black Unitarian Universalist Caucus Love and its Black Affairs Council yep. in the days of the '60s, when talking Black and UUism was a highly controversial mm -hmm. 
experience and challenge and endeavor that caused a lot of existential crisis and mm -hmm. conundrum for the entirety of the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, if nothing else, what this does is reaffirms the continuity of the history that we try to bring mm -hmm. to reveal to the church that justice is more than just rhetoricizing seven mm -hmm. principles, but mm -hmm. it is living them in living. the real world, in yes. the real space. And uh, the torch has been passed to this new generation 50 years later, which is my source of joy mm -hmm. that uh, a new group of uh, African-American Unitarians and their friends and supporters have uh, found the space to engage in conversations to pursue questions that we had begun to pursue, which we call black humanism mm -hmm. back then, that uh, we did not have the opportunity to fully uh, pursue because of the controversies of uh, white nationalism and white power in the church in, the, in those days. And so this to me uh, feels good because there is the space to do this. More than anything else, regardless of the outcome, regardless of the, the things that are said or not said, the very fact that there is the space to do it and that African American Unitarians have decided to do it and the church has not interfered with, it, with uh, their desire to do it and that they're able to pursue it on their own terms to explore the issues that are of relevance to both African Americans, people of color, and the whole of the church. That is the significance of all of this. Mm -hmm. There are many issues here that are not complete. Uh, the presentations that have been held thus far, uh, they've been okay, but they're, they're not complete because there's not been adequate time to explore what is meant by a theological perspective in the first place, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you try to integrate social change with theological thinking, you, you you need a lot more time to do that. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just the beginning of a process. So I'm not wrapped up in what I have enjoyed about what has happened thus far. Uh, I'm enjoying just seeing it happen. Right. And, and there's a lot more of it to happen that uh, will be uh, fun for me, and then I can just sit back later and reflect and say, uh, our children and our grandchildren of the movement of the 60s have done well by having made this happen. Mm. So to me, that's the joy of mm. being here. Uh, I'm glad I congratulate the leadership. I am honored and humbled that I have been asked to be here uh, in my role as an elder, and I consider myself a global religionist that ca crosses over all the boundaries that divide us in the religious world so that we understand that our task today is to recapture humanity so mm. that it has a chance to survive. Uh, yeah. So it's Amen. that framework that I am here yeah. and again I salute and congratulate my descendants if you would mm -hmm. uh, in blue and all of you and all of everyone else in the church who believes in the relevance of transformation and what faith is supposed to lead us to. So thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to share a word. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> we have an amazing waiting list here. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Appreciate it. I'm going to invite Reverend Michael Slack because he has to be in a meeting because he's one of the key yes. lead organizers here. We had to feature the leadership because people have been thanking us and we're like, no, no. <laughs> no, no, thank blue. blue. So here's one of the faces of blue. And hey, everybody. How is it to be here after so much time putting it together and imagining? <laughs> you know, this is... We, at some point, we thought, you know, we're just going to keep talking about this ad nauseum. Like, we talk about this, we've been talking about this every week for almost two years. Yeah. And to finally be here, is it just feels a lot like magic. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm levitating a little bit well, everywhere. You all just, I mean, you manifested, yeah. you know? Yeah. That, that yeah. is... The, I remember mm -hmm. when when you all were talking <laughs> right, about this. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then, right. and now, yeah, you yeah, manifested yeah. the thing that was needed at the time that it was needed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And for Unitarian Universalism, but for Black Unitarian Universalism, <laughs> and for POC Unitarian Universalism, mm -hmm. and, and Indigenous, and and it just that is one of the things that to me is so important about the Blue Mission. And the way that you all work That's right. together That's right. is is just to be able to have that vision <coughs> and to be able to stay on it mm -hmm. and right. unapologetically. Right. This we, is what we're gonna do. We were really clear that we had no idea <laughs> what would happen. We had yeah. no idea what will come out of this. Like we're still unclear, 
But one thing is always true, is that we believe that anything is possible. That's right. And we live that, like that is a part of our faith, it is at the foundation of our faith, that anything and everything is possible, and that we don't have to dream about it and just talk about it, yeah. right? We don't have to strive for it, yeah. we can just do it. Yeah. <laughs> And so between everyone on the organizing collective board, um, all the people who we brought on as staff, um, everyone who has shown up as a volunteer, chaplains, like people who have just really said yes, like we just create a space and invite people to say yes over and over and over again. Yes, I can do this. Yes, it is possible. And this is what happens. Like, this is what faith looks like. Yay! This, this, is, is what this is what my faith looks like, and this is what resource faith, what resource faith, faith looks like. Looks because like. I think that's one of like. that's one of the right. things that you know we we sometimes hear is you know oh there's some idea that somehow there was no plan, you know, and folks, let me tell you, there was a plan, <laughs> and this manifestation of there's, that plan right, right. is the beauty of right. what resourced. Mm -hmm faith looks mm -hmm. like right and, and, so, and also too I think it's worth saying that, that there's a difference between having a plan and having a script yes right yes. like we were really clear that there's a plan for this we knew exactly what we needed to do to execute it some of us have been on the organized collective board for a while and have a really good <laughs> yeah. sense of how to organize and make things happen quickly yes. and some of us are still figuring that out in all kinds of ways and so there's definitely a plan we don't have a script we don't know what everybody's gonna think about this yeah. what anybody's gonna say um, you know, I have a little bit of an outline for the plenary that's about to happen in a few minutes. <laughs> but what really, really matters is that we show up present. That's right. As long as we show up present. That's right. And respond and really listen. Oh, yeah. We're going to be fine. Yep. And we are so fine right now. That's so right. fine. That's so what fine. we're, we're so just fine. keep saying. It's like 1 o'clock on the first day. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 1 o'clock on the first day. It's already completely amazing. It, it's already completely amazing. <laughs> so, and we have, you know... Two days left yes. all together. Yeah. Um, so I'm just grateful that everyone is here and grateful that, that the view is here. Thank you for, for broadcasting live here. This is fantastic. So you all are great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Take care. Justin, come on over. Hi. So Justin's one of our filmmakers. So tell us who you are and a little bit about your background and what your experience here has been. Cool. Um, my name is Justin Ofori. And if you could speak. Um, no, no, you're right. Just right loud. Just loud. Oh, my name is Justin Oporiata. Um, I'm a filmmaker. I'm a Ghanaian American, first generation. Um, yeah, I got uh, offered an opportunity to be a camera operator for this event uh, with my friend DA, partner DA. Um, yeah, so it's the first time I've been a part of something like this. It's a great experience, very welcoming energy that I felt. And it's cool to see everybody trying to get their voice out and their opinions and everything. And their, uh, also, their backgrounds as people that want to have their voice be uh, represented in a positive light. So, yeah, it's very cool. And uh, I'm glad to be a part of something like empowering such as this. And you've done a documentary on yeah. Black Lives uh, Matter? Yeah, I made a documentary on Black Lives Matter. And the main goal of that documentary was to make sure we could kind of just like humanize black people in general because the media has a way of portraying yeah. uh, things in a very violent way. And just getting to know people and really see the human side of others, like their their hobbies and honestly what they're trying to represent. And it's not no animosity for anyone. It's just love. And basically, it just wants to uh, just highlight the story of uh, what goes down in people's lives and why people are upset. Just kind of like relate to others. Where can we see that? Oh, it's on YouTube. Can you so, tell us like what to yeah. search for on YouTube yeah, to so find you, it? You can search up my name, Justin Oporiata, on YouTube and just look on my uh, videos and you'll find it. It's called More Than a Movement. Right More than a movement. More than a movement. Right. Right. Check it out. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Tell us. So who I, are. <laughs> I am Adele, Reverend Doctor Adele Smith Penniman, and I think it was back in 1981 that I went through um, primary, primary preliminary fellowship following the footsteps of Yvonne, who was the first, and I was the second. Mm -hmm. And the first to re I was the first to receive final fellowship. And my journey with the Unitarians has been bumpy. There have been some wonderful moments in the parish where I would walk with people through all the transitions of life from birth to death, and it's been such an honor. And the work I did in the community was very enriching, particularly with women who are most marginalized, immigrants, homeless, impoverished. 
the teaching in feminist theology was so stretching. But so much of the rest of my UU experience has been painful. Um, I served two parishes, both white, both affluent. And of course, some amazing, amazing people. But the racism runs deep in the association. And often when there is an African-American leader in such a position, that person becomes the target. Mm -hmm. And the association as a whole too often seem to be clueless. They had a program called Journey Toward Wholeness mm -hmm. with the intent of looking at racism. But often the facilitators were people who had not done their own homework. So to come into a congregation made it all the more volatile. At one point when I was on the Ministerial Fellowship Committee and between seeing candidates, I was expressing, oh, it's becoming a little bit more diverse. And one of the other people on the MFC said, well, we're not going to lower our standards. So we know the message that the association is giving out. But I am so thankful to be with Blue, to see so many new faces, the welcomes and the smiles. I have been a member of a Unitarian church for some time since retiring, but I hadn't gone in years. And I received an email that on this particular Sunday, about a month ago, an African-American mem member was talking about his experience at GA with a focus on race and racism. So I went up after the service and said, Booker, what do I do? I don't have a faith community. And he said, go to this symposium. Oh. So I say thank you, everyone, for your welcomes, the smiles, the hugs. Feels so, so good. I wish, Adele, you could have seen your face transform when you uh -huh. talked about Blue, like when uh -huh. you made that transition. She can. It's from, live. I know. <laughs> I can go back and see her. Because, like, yeah. you were talking about, you know, this historical perspective mm -hmm. of your experience of Unitarian uh -huh. Universalism, uh -huh. and then talking about your experience here, and you're uh -huh. just like, this this light uh -huh. came out from yeah. within you, Good. and that's Good. just, mm -hmm. whew, okay. it means a lot to, to yeah. know that that uh -huh. our people are getting that. Yeah. Really, to me, it means a lot because uh -huh. it's hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many years it's have hard. I not gone to a right? church? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Okay. Thank you. Hi, we don't want dead air. <laughs> Hello. Hello. In. Hello. Tell us who you are Hi. and where you're home based, and I believe you're your fourth child. <laughs> That's true. Just needed to say that. You're having a whole Thank team, yeah. which is great. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Um, I'm Elizabeth Carrier Ladd. I am uh, in Muncie, Indiana. I, I am um, the youth director there. I'm also a minister. Um, and I am so grateful to be welcomed into this space. I'm also a member of the Allies for Racial Equity Leadership Collective. Um, and we have a large group of us gathered here. Um, we had some leadership collective time right previous to the start of the symposium and are leaving some time right after the symposium for white folks to process all of the things that is especially ours to process after being a part of this. Uh, but I'm just so overwhelmed with gratitude to be welcomed into this space, uh, to get to be here to witness and to practice decentering, uh, because it feels so profound in your body as, as different than talking about it at nausea, right? Um, so just being able to have another experience of decentering, but to be able to do that within Unitarian Universalism, which is rare. Uh, to be able 
to feel what that feels like and to practice the humility of listening and witnessing and growing and changing and keeping your mouth shut more often than you talk. And it's very rare for, I'm going to name, white ministers mm -hmm. for rents because you're a minister mm -hmm. and that I think is also embodying and practicing what that means has also, I believe, been impactful. Even for me as well to, to kind of witness oh, folks are listening, and that's, you know, I didn't think people would self-selected to come here, and yet to have that is like, this is what it looks like, this is what we talk about when we're saying decentering whiteness, this is what progressive stacking is, this is what it looks like, Great. so, um, yeah. Great, and there was that, like, those folks who self-selected to come here, yes, probably have some level of understanding, and yet... That and doesn't yet. mean that we will be able to practice this well. And that yet. doesn't mean that any of us have arrived, because none of us have arrived, and we all have so much more growing and changing to do. Yeah. So all of that at once. What do you think, I mean, I know we're only day half, you know, day, not even whole one, but what, so far, is there a nugget that you're going to take with you already, or something that you've just been... So I've been particularly thinking about the questions that I want to chew on with white folks at the end. Um, so I've already been writing down some of the questions around how do we take, how do we really infuse our history, the way that we talk about our history, with the things that have been erased. Um, that's a big takeaway from this morning, is how do we, how do we go back and reinsert those stories into the way that we teach our history to our children and to our adults as a church that is so full of converts uh, who we may not teach enough of our history anyway, never mind thinking about it in a decolonizing way. Um, so that's a big piece. I also, the nugget about political activism being central to spiritual grounding for black folks this morning uh, and how that's central to our whole understanding of our faith, but also um, where's the where is the grounding for resilience in that too? Um, so where because political activism can be done in a way that is infused with resilience and yeah. spiritual grounding, yeah. and w in ways that aren't, right. and that's something our whole faith yeah. struggles with where where that is and where it isn't. Yeah, and I think part of naming. Unitarian Universalist history is the missed opportunities, right? Ethel Red Brown went to the Unitarian Association mm -hmm. and begged for help, asked for help, mm -hmm. and was basically told no, mm -hmm. right? We were told that, oh no, we're going to stay multicultural. Yeah. Joey's means white. Great. What's, you, know, yeah. you know what I mean by that? Um, yeah. I mean that it's still white-centered, mm -hmm. that is what I want to articulate. So learning the history completely is, yes, including um, black Unitarians and Universalists and black Unitarian Universalists and the missed opportunities that happened along the way. So, yeah. And so I just want to yeah. say that. Yeah, all of that at once. So yes. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think that's fine. All right. I'll come Have say whatever you want me to say. <laughs> We're live to Kia. Okay. Excited to close this hour, which has been wonderful. With We had Dr. Michael Slack, and here we have... It's the doctors who did this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Takiya, I mean, talking about how it is to have created this magic and what it's like to be here. You know, it feels kind of like walking through a dream because when you are planning something for a really long time, you're focused on all the details, and then you think to yourself, what if people don't even come? <laughs> you know? So to see that we built this, and people wanted it. Oh, yeah. To know that people have responded favorably to the live stream, it's like walking through a dream. The other thing that's been exciting is seeing the combinations of conversations mm -hmm. that are happening in between sessions. People who might not normally have a chance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to talk or engage these ideas together. I've been very effervescent about <laughs> it. Well, I, I, we're, earlier we were talking about the intentionality behind make, keeping it small. Oh, yeah. so that so that those conversations can happen yeah well I come from an academic background and I go to a lot of conferences and it's very easy in a conference setting to just go to your little breakout sessions and leave right. to pick your track and never engage with anyone across that track we knew that a lot of the content in these plenaries would be new mm -hmm. for black folks for non-black folks of color for white folks mm -hmm. so why not just stay together and be in a shared learning experience together 
that we can reflect on and learn from as a faith community. That seemed important. As a religious educator, you're, you're See, singing our song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we love it. Yeah, and I know that there are some people, you know, who wish it was, you know, who might be wishing it was larger. It could have been twice this size, but it really was intentional to keep it this small so that we would have the level of engagement right. that we're getting, and that's been really exciting. Yeah. Thank you so much. Anything else from the Blue Crew? Thank, so Thank, Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, people. Thank you, View Crew. Yay. <laughs> oh, wait, I'll ask you one more question. Oh, if let me stand down. up. What's yeah. your dream about where all this great energy goes at okay. the conference? So, in a perfect world, I imagine that the symposium is like a little pebble dropped in a pond and that there are ripples. I hope that people take what they learn and they transform those UU 101 workshops that happen in congregations where you don't hear about any black yes, people. Yes, and there's yes. this, you know, suggestion mm. that black people are sort of guests in this tradition mm. and haven't been architects of it. Mm -hmm. I hope that people take what they learn and they go back and they change that content. I hope that people hear book titles and they buy them and read them. Mm -hmm. I hope that people think differently about the culture of congregational life, that they think differently about youth offerings, that they think differently even about offering conferences or learning opportunities beyond congregations. Um, we're kind of engaging a radical model here. Please steal it from us. Um, that would be my hope, that people take what they learn and don't just go, well, that was really great. <laughs> take what you learned and transform something where you are in the service of love and liberation and that will be a faithful witness to the black unitarian universalist worldview that we're trying to articulate so amen amen, yeah. amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you bye regular time next week and we'll here's be back. Antonia we'll be back. Yeah. can't remember we're doing something we're doing yeah. something next week something amazing <laughs> we're going to be at Lorena and yeah. hi michael tino back home bye, bye michael <laughs>